What happened to my child's tech cafe? We are even terrible science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Easy to comprehend, assimilate, fun, and entertaining. Today, we are having another interesting topic. Root of polynomials. Um, under polynomials, we have treated division, addition, some um, basic processes and polynomials. So that understanding will help us to undo roots of polynomials. What are polynomials? Polynomials are algebraic expressions made up of one or more variables and the sum of terms involving non-negative integer parts of variables, e.g. 2x squared minus 3x squared plus 5x is a polynomial, but neither 3x raised to power half nor 5 over y are polynomials. You can see, this is not the whole power, a whole number, and this one is negative because 5 over y is equal to 5. That's what I want to show. But once the power is positive and constant, that is when the power is zero, you can, and you can add all of this, you can call that one polynomial. Since you have known what polynomials are, we know the basic polynomial. And the basic polynomial is quadratic. And what is quadratic? Quadratics are polynomials whose greatest power is 2. The greatest power in quadratic is 2. Look at this example. We always express quadratic as this. ax squared plus bx plus c. And what are we talking about the roots of polynomials? We are talking about the sum, the product. You can use it to form different expressions. And you can just try to work out some things about the roots. That's what this topic is about. Now, let's continue with quadratics. <coughs> when we have quadratics like this, we can easily talk about what the sum will be and what the product of the roots are. For instance, let's talk about this one. If you have two roots, because the greatest power is 2. And let's say the roots are alpha and beta. Let's say the roots are alpha and beta. We will know that, and we always know that, for us to have a quadratic, where we are trying to find the roots, the factors, and whatever, if we have a root like this, it's going to give us a linear expression that is as a factor of this, in this one. These are the uh, factors x minus alpha and x minus beta. So, we know that the combination of this, the product of these two, will give us this kind of expression. The product of these two will give us this kind of expression. Now, for us to have this kind of expression, by the time we multiply these two, the coefficient of this one will be 1. The coefficient of x squared will be 1. So, which means that alpha or beta, or the two of them, can be fraction. So, if we have it like this, let's say this one, we are going to have <coughs> x squared minus alpha plus beta plus alpha beta. That will be the product of this two. And since we are going to have it like this, like I said, for us to have any constant in the front here, we have to really make this one, the coefficient of this one, to be 1. The coefficient of x squared, we have to, we have to make it to be 1, so that we will be able to equate it to this one. So it's going to be x squared plus b over a x plus c over a. Now, <coughs> by the time you compare these two, since you have equated the two, you can see that b over a will be equal to minus the sum. And c over a is equal to the product. Very easy. Just do the expansion of the product of this. You get it. And then compare it to this. So always put the sign, these signs. You, always, you must always put it into consideration. That is this one, this sign, this sign, this sign. You must put everything into consideration. Another way you look at it is this. <coughs> you know that if you use the factor uh, quadratic formula to find the answers, you can see that alpha is equal to minus b plus or minus root plus, let's make it, plus root b squared minus 4ac over 2. And beta will be equal to minus b plus or minus root of oh. beta will be minus b minus root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. 
So if you read from this perspective, you can say that alpha plus beta is equal to minus b minus b plus root of b squared minus 4ac minus root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So by the time you look at this, this one you can solve this. We are going to have minus 2b over 2a. B is equal to minus b over 2a. So the, our, our answer is still consistent with this. You can see alpha plus beta is equal to minus b over a, like we did here. B over A is minus alpha plus beta. So let's look at alpha beta. And that is going to be the product of this. You can see that this is conjugate. This one is conjugate of this one. So it's going to be minus B all squared minus root of B squared minus 4AC all squared divided by 4A squared. Divided by 4A squared. So by the time you look at this, this one, we remove this uh, square root sign. So I'm going to have, you can see, minus b squared. That one is going to be b squared. That's going to be b squared. Minus b squared plus 4ac divided by 4a squared. So I'm going to have, you can see, b squared equals b squared. So I'm going to have 4ac over 4a squared. So this one, so it's going to be c over a. So you can see. The answer is still consistent. Alpha beta is C over A. Alpha plus beta is minus B over A, just like we have gotten in this case. There are several ways of arriving at this answer, but I think this is sufficient for us at this stage. Now that we have known under this situation that if we have an expression like this, AX squared plus BX plus C over 0, and the roots are alpha and beta, the sum of the roots we will equal to minus b over a, and the product, we have it as c over a. Then, we can also, we'll be able to form other expressions whose roots can be alpha squared and beta squared, or 1 over alpha and 1 over beta. Even to any power. So, without really trying to get what is the actual value of alpha and what is the actual value of beta, or we can even with this get the actual value of alpha and the actual value of beta, depending on how the questions are phrased. Now, let's look at that next. Once we have been able to get what alpha plus beta and what alpha beta are, and we are asked to find. Uh, to get another quadratic expression. Yeah, the roots are alpha squared and beta squared. What I'm saying is this. If we have an expression, we are given an expression like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. And you have to find, to um, get another quadratic expression with roots alpha squared and beta squared. It can be mixed, it can be in any form. How do we go about this? We know that the sum of the roots, and that's where the challenge comes mainly at this level in quadratics. This is where the challenge is at. What is the sum of the roots? is going to be alpha squared plus beta squared. This is not easily gotten, because I don't know what alpha is or beta is, but I know what alpha, alpha plus beta and alpha beta r. So from here, let's look at an expression like this. Alpha plus beta all squared will be equal to alpha squared plus beta squared plus 2 alpha beta. So it shows that I can easily get alpha plus beta squared now, which are the new sum of the roots. It's going to be, therefore, alpha squared. Let me see. Therefore, sum of the roots. Alpha squared plus beta squared will be equal to alpha plus beta all squared minus 2 alpha beta. You can see it's not simplified. So we, are, we can now say that this one is going to be minus b over a all squared minus 2 into c over a. So you can see, very easy. 
And what is the product? Product of the host. It's just going to be alpha squared times theta squared. And that's going to be alpha theta all squared. This is going to be c over a all squared. So with this, I will just introduce this into the new expression. And it's just going to be something like this. So it's just going to be something like this. Just look at this. It's going to be x squared into minus b over a squared minus 2 into c over a s plus c over a all squared. So this will be the new expression. But why am I doing this? Most of the time you have figures. And since you have figures for C, A, B, you just substitute here and then you get your answer. It's the same thing here. So it won't be anything as bulky as this. So instead of having something like this here, you are going to have a figure in this case. You are going to have a figure in this case. And then, go that you have gotten your answer. Let's look at some examples. To make what you have been discussing clearer, let's undo some examples. We have this question. The correct equation x squared minus 2px plus p equals 0. Such that one root is 3 times the value of the other root. Find p. In this instance, the knowledge of the sum of the roots and the product of the roots will make our job easier here. Why? We are told that there are two roots. The expression is x squared minus 2px plus p equals 0. And we have two roots. Let's, let's make them alpha and beta. And we are told that one root is three times the value of the other root. Find p. In this instance, finding the value of alpha or beta is not really does not really help, but can at least we can we might be able to get an answer with that. So we are going to have it like this. Let's say alpha is equal to three beta. Alpha is equal to three beta. So we can now say that alpha plus beta will be equal to three beta plus beta, and that is 4 beta. That is the sum. That is the sum. And then alpha beta will be equal to 3 beta times beta, and that is 3 beta squared. From this expression, we can see that the sum, that is 4, b, 4 beta, will be equal to this over a. That is minus minus 2p over 1. Please take notes. A is 1. B is minus 2p. And C is equal to 2. So, 4b is equal to minus b over a. That is minus minus 2p over a. That is 2p. 3b squared, 3 beta squared is equal to p over 1. Which is equal to I can say that. Let me multiply this one by 2, or divide by beta. Let me divide 2. So I can now say that 3 beta squared over 4 beta is equal to 2p, uh, p over 2p, which is half. So I can now say that. 3 over 4 beta is equal to half. So beta is equal to 4 over 3 times half, which is 2 over 3. Now, we know the relationship between beta and p. We know that 4 beta is equal to 2p from here. 4 beta is equal to 2p. Therefore, p is equal to 4 beta over 2, which is 2 beta. And we know that our beta is 2 over 3. And that is going to be 2 times 2 over 3, which is 4 over 3. So you can see how easy we have been able to get our p without resorting into finding what beta is, what alpha is, and doing some rigorous arithmetic or mathematics. Now let's solve this. We have an expression as this 3x squared plus 9x plus 1 equals 0 as root alpha and beta. 
Why the question was put uh, alpha plus beta and alpha beta? So we have this expression 3x squared plus 9x plus 1 equals 0. And the roots are alpha beta. We are now asked to find a new expression whose roots are alpha plus beta and alpha beta. From this, we know what alpha plus beta is and what alpha beta is. So, alpha plus beta is equal to minus 9 over 3, which is minus 3. Alpha beta is equal to 1 over 3. So, in this our new uh, equation, new expression, new expression now, let's call this one alpha complement is going to be minus 3. Beta complement is equal to 1 over 3. And when you want to find um, expression, when you want to form quadratic equation, we are going to add these two and we are going to multiply these two. So alpha plus beta is going to be minus 3 plus 1 over 3. That is minus 3. Minus 2 over 3. And the product is going to be minus 3. Our new, okay, let me make this one, minus 8 over 3. And we are now going to have it like this. x squared minus, minus 8 over 3 is minus 1. So that's going to give me x squared plus 8 over 3 x minus 1. So, let's multiply 2 by 3. So at the end of the day, we have three x squared plus eight x minus one equals zero. So this is the new expression with root having the sum and the product. So this is the new expression. You can see, I don't need to find what alpha is, what beta is, and then start working it out. I can get my answer easily. Now let's look at another way of looking at the roots of polynomials when we are solving something like this. It's easier and faster to get the answer. We refer to it as recurrence. Now, sometimes you may have um, polynomials that you will be asked to find new expression with polynomials of the power n, of the, root, uh, of the power n of the initial root. What I mean is that now you are asked to find, we have a, a polynomial like this. Okay, you have a quadratic like this. Let me speak to quadratic. You have a quadratic like this. A f squared plus b x plus c equals zero. We know that the roots are alpha and beta. And we are now have to find a new polynomial or to find the sum Sn with alpha raised to the power n and beta raised to the power n. With this recurrence, it is very easy. I will show you the two from the previous way and this one. So we will not just oppose it. So anytime you want to work it out, you will be able to select which formula is easy for you or which technique is easy for you. In this place now, we have Sn to be equal to alpha raised to the power n and beta raised to the power n. You know I told you, for the product, it is very easy. If you have asked to find what will be the product of this, it will just be alpha raised to the power n, beta raised to the power n, and that is alpha beta raised to the power n. This one does not really pose much challenges, but this is where the real challenge is. And that is why this recurrence can help, especially when the power is higher than 2, it's getting to 3 and 4. Now, let's look at something here. We know that when we have an expression like this, S1, that is when alpha is raised to the power 1, and beta is this one, that is alpha plus beta, is going to be minus b over a for quadratic place for quadratic, because we are still going to higher powers. Now, since we know, you must know this one already, have it at the tip of your finger. And we also know that alpha beta 
is equal to c over a. With this one, we can easily slot this one in later on to be getting s n. That is alpha raised to power n plus beta raised to power n. That is the sum of the powers of alpha and beta. Let's look at um, how we arrive at it easily. Here I have a f squared plus b x plus c. Now, you know that if I put in alpha, if I substitute alpha for x, I'm going to have 0. If I substitute beta for x, I'm going to have 0. I'm going to have 0. Now, let's try. So, in this instance, I'm going to have a into alpha raised to power 2 plus b alpha plus c is equal to 0. You can see. b, a into beta raised to power 2 plus Now, let me add everything. You can see that this one is going to be A into alpha squared plus beta squared plus B into alpha plus beta plus 2C equals 0. Note, the coefficients of X and the coefficients of X squared are still the same when we are adding this. But by the time you finish the addition, the coefficient of c, that is the constant, is multiplied by the power of alpha, the greatest alpha and beta that you are looking for, is multiplied by c. So from here, you can easily work it out and say that a into alpha squared plus beta squared plus b, you know what alpha and beta is now? Minus b over a plus 2c equals 0. Now, let's divide 2 by a. So I have alpha squared plus beta squared plus, so I'm going to have this one as minus now, minus b squared over a squared plus 2c over a equals 0. So when the power is getting too high, you can easily work it out with this. Now, since I have gotten this, I can now see alpha squared plus beta squared will be equal to b squared over a squared minus 2c over a. Or I can say b over a all squared minus 2 into c over a. Now, with this, let's compare it to what we did initially. We said that alpha squared plus beta squared will be equal to alpha plus beta all squared minus 2 alpha beta. You remember? Now, what is alpha plus beta? Minus b over a. Remember? So, which is minus b over a, all squared, minus 2 into c over a, which is also equal to b over a. You know the negative will be positive. I time you square it, minus 2 into c over a. Remember, we derived this initially from here. And this one is gotten from this recurrence formula. So by the time you practice this recurrence formula, you will, re you will enjoy this one even more than this, especially when the power is getting to 3, 4, 5. Even, it can even be, uh, reciprocal. This one will make your job very, very easy. Let's look at one or two examples and you'll understand it better. But to enjoy this, you will need to practice and practice and practice. You will need to practice. By the time you practice with like five questions, you will get over it. If you do it with concentration. Now, we have this. The root of 4x squared plus 7x minus 5 equals 0 are alpha and beta. Find the value of alpha squared plus beta squared. And A is the expression whose roots are alpha squared and beta squared. I directly put this question like this so that you will be you'll be able to see the basic application of the recurrence technique. I use the two techniques we have learned. So the real expression is this: 4x squared plus 7x minus 5 equals 0. And the roots are alpha and beta. So for me to find alpha squared plus beta squared, 
I will bring in this as positive uh, substitute here. With time, you don't even need to do that. You would have known your answer already. The, the, the expression, what the expression will be. So let's bring it like this. So four into alpha squared plus seven alpha minus five equals zero. Four into beta squared plus seven beta minus five equals zero. Now let's add this. I'm going to have four into alpha squared plus beta squared plus seven into alpha plus beta minus ten equals zero. Or you know, like I said, this will be two times five because this power here we multiply these two. That's just observation. But from the equation itself, you know that alpha plus beta will be equal to minus seven over four. Alpha beta will be equal to minus five over four. So for us to find um, alpha squared plus beta squared, we will need to substitute minus seven over four here. So I'm going to have four into alpha squared plus beta squared will be equal to 10 minus 7 into minus 7 over 4. And that is going to be 10 plus 49 over 4, which is 89 over 4. So alpha squared plus beta squared will be equal to 89 over 16. I got this one using the current. Now let's use our normal expansion technique. That is alpha plus beta squared will be equal to alpha squared plus beta squared plus two alpha beta using binomial expansion or whatever. Now, this is what we need. We can now say that alpha squared plus beta squared will be equal to alpha plus beta all squared minus two alpha beta. And what is alpha plus beta minus 7 over 4? So I have to bring it here. It's going to be minus 7 over 4 all squared minus 2 into, you can see, minus 2 into minus 5 over 4. What does that give me? This one is going to give me 49 over 16 plus 10 over 4. If at the end of the day, it's going to be 89 over 16. So you can see the result is consistent. When the power is like 2, this one, or for quadratic, this one you might not really enjoy using this. But when you get to cubic, you know, quartic, you will enjoy using the correct. Now we have found the value of the sum. That is, we have known that alpha squared plus beta squared is equal to 89 over 16. So alpha beta, alpha squared beta squared is equal to alpha beta all squared. And that's going to be minus 5 over 4 squared, which is equal to 25 over 16. And from this, we can find our new expression. That is the expression with the root alpha squared and beta squared. Now, since I have known the value of alpha, the sum of alpha squared and beta squared, and this. So our new expression is going to be x squared minus sum plus the product. So let's multiply it by 16. So I'm going to have 16 x squared minus 89 x plus 25 equals 0. So you can see how easy with this manipulation we can get. So with this technique, you can find that of alpha q and beta q. Alpha is to the power 4 and beta is to the power 4. So any level, you can easily do that. And the knowledge of this recurrence can easily help us.